Hey guys, Alibaba recently released their new image editing model, called QN Image Edit 2511, and it's a solid improvement over the 2509 version. In this video, we're going to focus on inpainting using a comfy UI workflow that I built. I'll assume you already know how to download the model and where to place it, so instead of covering that again, we'll look at practical inpainting examples and how to fix common problems. The workflow is available on my GitHub repo, so let's jump in. Let's start from the left. Here, I have the Load Diffusion Model node for loading QN Image Edit 2511. I am using FP8 Mixed, but if you are using the BF16, select that one here. In case you are using GGUF models, use the GGUF loader from the GGUF Custom Node Pack. After adding the node, select the GGUF model and connect the model output to the model input of the LoRa Loader Modelinly node. Anyway, I am not going to use a GGUF model, so the Load Diffusion Model node is connected to the LoRa Loader Modelinly node. Here, I am using the BF16 version of the 4 Steps Lightning LoRa with a strength of 1.0. Next, for the model sampling Gora flow, I am using 3.10. You can play with the shift value to add variation to your image generation. I have the CFG norm in bypass mode, only use it if you are not using Lightning LoRa. From here, it is connected to the model input of the K sampler. I will come back to the K sampler later. Let's go back to the left part of the workflow. Here, I am using the load clip node to load the text encoder, which is the same text encoder used for other QN image models. Right now, I am using the FP8 version of the text encoder with the type set to QN image and device to default. From here, the load clip is connected to both the positive prompt and negative prompt. These prompts are then connected to the K sampler positive and negative inputs. Since we are using Lightning LoRa with a CFG of one, typing in the negative prompt will not have any effect on the generation. Then we have the load VAE node for loading the VAE model. The VAE output is connected to the various nodes that need VAE. Now let's move on to the bottom left part of the workflow. Here, we have three image loaders. The first image loader is used for loading the main image, while the others are used for transferring objects to the main image. Next, we have the scale image and mask group. What does this group do? First, we feed the main image into the image scale to max dimension node, which rescales the longest side to 1,328 pixels while maintaining the image proportions. I chose 1,328 because the inpainting works better at this resolution. The image is then sent to the VAE encode node to transform it into a latent, which is then passed to VAE decode to transform it back into an image. We then extract that image resolution using the get image size node and use that information to rescale the main image and mask. The new rescaled image is given to another VAE encode node. This transforms the image into a latent, which is then passed to the set latent noise mask node. This node combines the latent with the mask and sends that information to the K sampler. It's as simple as that. If you want to further refine the mask, you can do it within this group. You can use the expand option to increase the mask area and the blur radius to smooth the edges of the mask. Now let's move on to the K sampler. In the K sampler, the random seed option is on. I am using eight steps. While you can use four, I recommend eight steps for better quality. For the CFG value, I am using 1.0. The sampler is set to Euler and the scheduler to simple. Finally, the K sampler output is connected to the VAE decode, which then connects to the save image node to save the edited image, as well as to the image comparer for image comparison. Now that you have an idea of the workflow, let's start in painting. Let's go to the image loaders. In the main image loader, I'm going to select a different image. I'll choose this image of a woman. Click open, so we are going to change her long hair to short hair. First, we need to draw a mask over the area we want to change. Right click on the image and open the mask editor. Now let's draw a mask around her hair. You can use the scroll button on your mouse to zoom into the image. When drawing the mask, always make it a bit larger. Depending on the change you want, you should have an idea of how big the mask needs to be if the mask is too small. The in-painting will fail. Now that we're ready, let's save the mask. Another thing you should know, when we are editing just one image, put the unused image loaders in bypass mode. Otherwise, there is a chance that those other image loaders might influence the generation. Now let's focus on the positive prompt. I have already written, replace the long hair with short hair. We can also be more specific about the change we want. Now the prompt says, replace the long hair of the woman in image one with short hair. 
Now, let's run the workflow and wait for the result. The generation is complete. Now let's take a look at the result. As you can see here, her hair has been changed to short hair. If we compare it with the original image, you can see how good the result is. Also, there is no shifting in the generated image. Now let's try another inpainting task. Let's go to the image loaders and click on choose file to upload. I'm going to choose this image of a coffee server and click open. This time, I'm going to replace the coffee server with a handbag. For the handbag, I'm going to load another image into the second image loader. Let's put the second image loader in unbypass mode, then click on choose file to upload. I'll select this image of a handbag. Now we need to draw a mask around the coffee server. Let's right click on the image and open the mask editor. Like before, we need to draw a mask that is big enough to fit the bag. I think this is enough, let's save the mask. Now let's move to the positive prompt and type. Replace the coffee server in image one with the bag from image two. We are ready. Let's run the workflow and wait for the result. Well, the generation is complete and look at that. The coffee server was replaced with the brown bag from image two. The result is really good. The only problem is at the bottom of the bag where we can see some color on the table. We could solve that by drawing a larger mask around that area, but for now, I am happy with the result. So let's move on to another inpainting task. Let's go to the image loaders and select a new image in the main image loader. I'll select this image of a car and click open. We are going to replace this car with a different one, so let's select another car image in the second image loader. I'll choose this image of an old red car and click open. Now let's type, replace the white car. Oops, sorry, first let's draw a mask in the main loader. I'll right click on the image loader and click on open in mask editor. Let's draw a mask around the car and save it. Now let's finish the prompt. Replace the white car in image one with the car from image two, or we can be even more specific, red car from image two. Now let's run the workflow and wait for the result. Well, the generation is complete, but look at the result. The red car is not fitting properly into the scene. At this point, we can either try another generation or use a node to solve the problem. To fix this, we need the differential diffusion node. Let's double click and search for differential diffusion. You will see two nodes, one is native and the other is from KJ nodes. You can try the version from KJ nodes since it supports masks, but for now, I am going to use the native one. Now, we need to connect the differential diffusion node to the connection coming from the model loader to the K sampler. Now we are ready. Let's run the workflow and wait for the result. As always, the generation is complete, but look at the result, the car wasn't replaced. Instead, only the color of the car changed. I think we need to improve the prompt this time. I'm going to add the word, the, between with and red. Sometimes the model doesn't fully understand the prompt we wrote and small changes like this can help. Now let's run the workflow again and wait for the result. The generation is complete and this time the result is really good. The white car has been successfully replaced with the old red car and I'm very happy with how it turned out. Using the inpainting, you can remove unwanted objects from an image, replace text inside an image, or even change the clothing of a person. When working with multiple image loaders, make sure your prompt is very clear and specific, otherwise the model may produce unwanted results. Also, keep in mind that in some cases the differential diffusion node can actually make the output worse. If you notice artifacts or inconsistencies, try putting it in bypass mode and regenerate. So that's all I have to say in this video. Try out my workflow and let me know what you think in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon with another video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel.